Okay, two beautiful bearings. And they are so close to fitting. I don't know. I think if I could spin this shaft and sand it a little bit with some emery cloth, I think they'd go in there. It's kind of all, this end's kind of mangled up, so it's probably not a good way to tell. That would be awesome if I can get them on there. Then I might be able to spin the shaft some kind of way and turn the end on my new lathe. I don't know. But anyway, these are beautiful, but I'm not ready for this yet. First cut on the on the uh, headstock base plate done. I got one more cut where the white line is. I am definitely getting better with the plasma torch. By the time I finish this thing, I'll be able to use it properly. This is the base for the headstock. My plan is to tack weld it in place, drill four big holes in the corner, and hold it down with four slightly smaller bolts and then put jacking screws uh, around the perimeter if I need to, to um, get it aligned. And if I have to align it, I can put shims under it. Um, there's no way I'm gonna weld this and it's gonna come out perfect. So I'm gonna uh, make provisions to kind of scoot it around after I get the whole thing assembled. I'm not sure how this is gonna work, but to get the base over that lump of steel, added another piece of steel under it. So. I think the magnet should hold um, through all of that. Let's turn it on and see. Well, I don't know. I better put a clamp on the other side. That side comes up. Sorry about the persistent earthquakes we seem to be having. Uh, I don't know what's up with that, but they've been going on for years. Don't seem to be getting any better, only worse. thing about this drill and these bits they're hollow and it leaves a little plug and sometimes you don't see that plug and then you can't drill the next hole it won't go because there's a plug in the end this time it kind of came out the bottom it also leaves these lethal filings and they spin around you you better have leather gloves on when you're using this thing because these things will cut you to shreds okay we got four holes drilled we have a big old pile of nasty chips, and I don't have a single bolt that's suitable for that, believe it or not. So I'm going to have to go buy some on the way home, probably half by two and a half, grade eight. They're easy to get here. Just I just don't have any. So I just finished tapping all these holes with my taper tap, which is a standard tap. But it hits the angle before I believe it gets all the way through, so I bought a plug tap which is as uh, full threads closer to the bottom. So I'm gonna go back and tap them all again with the plug tap so that uh, when I put the bolts in, they won't seize up before they get all the way in. Well, I just spent a couple hours making this little, these little brackets here. Well, not making the brackets, but drilling, tapping all the holes and making two brackets. Just wasn't totally comfortable with one bolt in the middle of this thing. So I've drilled and tapped a hole every inch, so I'm thinking no matter what angle I turn this on, there'll be at least one of them in the back that I can uh, tighten down on and, and help make this thing more rigid, keep it from vibrating or whatever. Just peace of mind, but that's done. So now I'm gonna take this plate off and I'm gonna scribe a center line right down the middle of the um, deck here. And I'm gonna use that to help me align the uh, the bearings. Then I'll put the plate back. So I plumbed up from the center of the web, put a mark on both ends, clamped this aluminum straight edge, which is really straight, and I scratched a mark all the way down it. Hopefully that'll help me line up the bearings. And now I can take this uh, aluminum straight edge off, and I can put the plate back up there, and now I have bolts so I can bolt it down for Probably the first of many times, but I'll go ahead and bolt it down and snug it up. So I'm getting ready to make my tool holder. Uh, I'll make it three and a half inches square. 
I got this one and a quarter inch uh, rectangular tube for the riser. I'm gonna cut them out of these shim, this shim stock material. And I'm gonna cut them with the grinder because I want them kind of straight, straighter than I can get with the uh, plasma torch. So it'll be a little cutting, but uh, I got some new wheels, so it'll go pretty quick, hopefully. Okay, got them both cut out. I got them tack welded together. I'm going to drill the half inch hole through the middle. And I don't know what that other hole is from. We don't usually have that in shim stock. Somebody used, must have used it for something else. But I'm going to weld that, grind it flat, and then uh, weld it together onto the riser. Okay, so I got the riser centered in the middle. I got it held with just some weight. And I'm going to put a good weld on that. And then we'll, um, I'll run a bolt through it to hold the top part and weld it. Then I got a bunch of holes to drill. I'm gonna drill and tap 12 3 8 uh, threads. So I need to drill um, 5 16 holes. So I'm gonna go drill my holes and then I'll come back and tap them on. Tapping for these um, 3 8 bolts is so much easier than tapping for the quarter by 20s. The quarter inch tap always feels like it's gonna break. You can actually watch it twist when you put torque on it. This bigger tap, for one thing, there's less threads per inch, so it goes in quicker, and you can put a lot more torque on it. It's just, uh, it's just easier for me. I'm sure at some point when you get bigger and bigger, it will get harder, just physically. But um, putting these three eighths taps, this was easy stuff. I'm gonna take this bolt and drop it through that hole, which I don't have yet, and make it flush and uh, weld it. So I need to cut a six-sided hole through that plate. I'm using a plasma torch, it's going to be really ugly, but it doesn't matter because it's going to get all welded up. Okay, the bolt is in. I got it pulled tight with the through bolt. I'm going to weld it and grind it so it can't turn. And then I'm going to weld this plate onto up top. Uh, or at least tack it for now. This is my little fabrication for the operating nut to clamp down the tool post when, so it can swivel and unswivel. And when messing with these little bitty pieces of steel, to me, it's always easier to weld from the big piece and then cut it to size after it gets halfway welded. So this is just a cap to keep dirt and stuff out of there. And I flipped it over and put a little more weld on the nut. And the nut is what's gonna clamp down the uh, swivel. So this morning we have now a tool post. I don't have any tools, but we have a tool post. And it works pretty good. I can loosen it. I can swivel it. Get it where I want it. Tighten it up. Um, I have it tacked on the corners. When everything is finished and we like it, I'll weld it up good. And I also welded two little clips. One here. And one over here. And these are to lock the carriage. Um, and I've put a little wrench on them and they work really good. You know, they can be overpowered, but they will keep the um, carriage from vibrating and changing location. If you if you turn in a long cylinder and you want it to not move, they're gonna work all right. I'm gonna get rid of these little bolts and get something with a, I don't, I don't know, something that you don't need a tool to operate. And I'm getting close to being able to set this to grade and trying to figure out how to make a platform for it. So look what came in the mail. The Allen headed cap screw for my compound slide. I know what the name is, compound slide. Of course, I don't have an Allen wrench that big, but I do have a, I guess this is a 5 16 bolt and the head fits, so I'll have to make a wrench. And this is, um, I'm not sure what grade this is, but it's pretty hard, so this will last a long time. So let me put this thing together. Well, surprise, surprise, it won't fit. The hex head bolt that I cut one side off of it fit, but I've cut the head flush with the shank. This one it just won't go. Either I gotta make the hole bigger, which I don't really want to. I think I'll grind half of the head off, or part of the head off, 
see if I can't get it in there I think even with the this is a high strength kind of deal I think even with a piece of the head off the wrench is not gonna slip I think I'll be good let me go grind it off see what happens okay I shaved one side down a little bit and it fits it fits in there doesn't fit easily I might pick up the whole slide to get the bolt started threaded in there but once it's the thread start then it will be good <clears throat> so for now I'm using a bolt with a double nut on the other side but I'm going to turn this bolt into a dedicated wrench but it fits it's in there and the slide can slide oh what's the slide hitting Oh no, the slide, oh no, I'm going to have to trim it, good grief, it's hitting the corner of that cast iron thing that sticks down, crap, okay, I'm going to trim some on the bolt head, I'm going to trim some on the cast iron, which means I need to take it out again. So by cutting it shorter, I don't know, maybe I took off an eighth of an inch, probably not quite that much. And beveling the edges, it'll work. And taking off the washer, I can't use the washer. Or maybe I can find a thinner washer, but that thick washer is a no-go. Um, but it works now, I think. I'll put it back in and see. Okay, I got the bolt back in there with no washer and the trimmed head. And let's see if the thing slides. Okay, the slide is good, it goes all the way both ways. Tight for some reason. Well, it's not that tight. Alright, I could put the screw back together, but I got a feeling I'll just be taking it all apart again, so I'm gonna leave the feed screw off. But good. Now these bolts up here are all gonna have to be replaced with Allen head uh, cap screws because there's just not enough room for a wrench right now. But I did get my turning tools, so let's see what that looks like. So I purchased my first cutting tools. These were uh, like six for 20 bucks, including shipping. So we couldn't turn that down. Um, it's new steel, it's never been used, but I'll have to re-grind the points. And it's high speed steel, which is what I wanna use. Um, carbide is kind of the industry standard now, but carbide takes higher speeds, higher pressures, higher feed rates to work efficiently. Um, high speed steel, you can go slower, you can uh, feed slower and still get good chips, and I can grind my own tools. So uh, I'm going to go retro. I'm going to go high-speed steel. And it comes in one inch, three-quarters, and a half. is kind of the normal sizes. I got three-quarters and a half. And I got a piece of three-quarters in the tool holder. And just pretend this piece of rusty steel is a quarter-inch shim. Um, so if I have a one-inch piece of high-speed steel, I won't have a shim. And it'll go from here to here. If I have a the three quarter, I'll have a quarter inch shim. And if I have a half inch, I'll have a half inch shim. And that way, the top of the cutting tool will always be more or less the same height. Now, the top of the cutting tool needs to be the center line of the workpiece. So now I know how high up to lift the bearings. The center of the bearings needs to be right there, more or less nothing. It needs to be right there. So um, I got to figure out. I got to figure out how to get it up that high and get it straight and making it strong is easy getting it in the right place that'd be a little bit more tricky but oh by the way i'm going to keep these hex head cap screws because they're grade eight and i have them and they work fine with the box end wrench um <clears throat> yeah they're fine so maybe one less expenditure i don't have to make for specialty bolts i've been watching lots of youtube videos on how to do all this stuff and I've noticed a lot of guys can go to a scrapyard and get all sorts of beautiful pieces of steel and odds and ends. And we're here on an industrial corridor because of the Mississippi River. And the scrapyards here are just huge. They're immense. And they deal with all kinds of cool, interesting equipment and steel. And you can't buy anything from them. You can sell to them, but they don't allow people on the yard anymore. They used to, but now all the big yards... Um, 
they don't they they don't retail they don't, won't let you on the yard and it's a shame because uh that's what makes me have to reuse and scav scavenge all these little pieces because i don't have any other way to get steel unless i buy a whole complete you know five by 20 foot sheet and that's not practical so uh I'm jealous for the guys that can go to their local scrapyard and get goodies. So anyway, I'm cutting out the um, base for where the bearings bolt down up top. It's kind of I'm kind of out of sequence here. I think I've already shown a picture of the bearing support, but this is, this is where it came from. All right, let's do some high-powered math. Um, no, I'm not doing this in my head. I have it written down. But the bottom of the bearing is one and a quarter inches off the deck. And the hole in the middle is one and three quarters. So half of that hole is seven eighths. So the one and a quarter plus seven eighths is two and an eighth inches from the deck to the center line. That it has to come up from the deck to the center line. Now what I have here. Now I have four and seven eighths from the deck to where I want to be. So I want to come up two and an eighth inches more than that. I think that's right. And that gives me, um, wait a minute. Yeah. I'm reading the numbers off a piece of paper and I'm still getting confused. How sad is that? Hold up, I gotta think. Okay, I got it again. Um, so, from here to the middle is two and an eighth. Um, this is four and seven eighths. So if I take the four and seven eighths and subtract two and an eighth, I get two and three quarters. So I need to come up two and three quarters more than my yogurt cup. My yogurt cup is five and a quarter. So I need to come up eight, but I wanna put another half inch plate here on top of whatever I put. So I want to come up seven and a half inches. So I think I'm going to cut a piece of scrap pipe seven and a half inches and tack weld it and weld the half inch plate on top so I'll have something to clamp to while we get this thing straight. So I've made a little perch, put that big um, the bearing assembly on. Just going to sit it up there. And that is solely to hold it up while I kind of slot. <clears throat> It's just to hold it up while I slide it around and try to get it level and plumb and aligned and everything lovely. It's just a, a temporary brace, but it'll be in there forever. Well, the bearings are perched, and it looks like the height is pretty close, maybe an eighth high. I'll have to investigate that. I'm really kind of at a loss right now how to proceed. If I had a shaft that would fit through here and stick out long, that would be huge, but I don't. I do have the one and a quarter inch shaft. I don't know if that'll work or not. But uh, anyway, we'll wrap it up for the day. A lot of lot of progress today. It was a good day, but I'm just kind of stuck right now. I got a plan, a comprehensive plan to get this thing lined up. First thing I'm gonna have to do is cut this shaft where the blue tape is. It doesn't need to be that long. And then from this point, from this point over, it needs to turn down enough to get into these bearings, which is not very much. They're both pretty much the same size, so we're talking a couple of thousands. And from this point over, I want to turn it down enough to use the hub that was on the little shafts. So that'll be, um, it'll go from one and a quarter to one and a half. So it'll be like turn down an eighth of an inch on each side. Then I will come back and I will mount it in the bearings and I will use the dial indicator on the carriage to run back and forth and check to make sure that the shaft is parallel, basically with these two stainless steel shafts to be aligned with the bearings. And in order to do that, I have it bolted here in the metal, but to hold this real big so we can move a lot, um, it can pivot and I have some jacking screws. I have four jacking screws under the bottom so we can jack it up and down and when I get it where I want it, I will weld this plate to this plate. And that will hold this thing still while I box in these corners and make it rigid. Um, I think that'll work if my buddy will let me use his, uh, his big lathe. If not, I might have to pay somebody because I don't have a way to do it yet. But I can definitely cut this off of here and take off a couple of pounds. So this is a real lathe. It's at my friend's cabinet shop and he's gonna let me use it. Um, 
And the advantage of a real lathe versus a homemade lathe is, well, it weighs like 100 times more. It has these finely ground ways, so extreme accuracy. But one of the main things is that the gearbox and the speed of the spindle is tied to the speed of this screw. And you can engage this screw and have the carriage go back and forth and cut threads because you can have the carriage move so many inches per revolution. You can gear it to cut threads. Also, it's just more productive. You can engage it and the cutting tool will advance all by itself. You don't have to be there. Um, it's also a big advantage is it has a hollow shaft, but I don't think it's big enough for my, for my shaft, which is gonna be a problem. But anyway, I haven't used a lathe since my LSU days, so kind of apprehensive here. We're going to we're going to start off slow. Okay, I am a little confused. I've been messing with this lathe for a while. It's pretty awkward because I don't know any of the controls or where any of the wrenches or the parts are, but I'm gradually getting it. Um so first I had the flange turn the other way and I finished this little piece here. And then I put this in the jaws and I used that'll be my new reference point and I honed out the inside pretty rough but I don't have much to work with here and then I started facing this surface and I got a dish and I don't know how I did that I was just using a cross slide it's not an adjustable cross slide it's fixed and I don't see that much wear on it I don't know what in the world I did the part didn't come loose it's still fixed in there pretty good I don't know, this is pretty confusing. Okay, I figured it out. I was cutting from the inside out because this cutting tool is only sharp on one side. And as I was creeping out with the cross slide, this thing was vibrating along. I wasn't holding it tight, so, so I figured that out. And now I need to cut a, a recess for the um, what's gonna be the pull. This is a um, brake disc from my wife's car, and I thought it was just cast iron. And I should have known better by looking at the sparks. All these sparkles are an indication of this is uh, some stronger steel than just cast iron. It didn't really dawn on me. So this was the part I first tried to turn on my friend's big lathe, and it was very, very hard, and I boogered up one of his cutting tools, and I feel terrible about that. I'm gonna have to get him some more cutting tools. But anyway, I'm using this to make the um, the drum for the shiv or the belt on the headstock. This will be what turns the headstock. And you know, I'm, I don't know if it's going to work, but I had it laying out there in the rain, so I was going to give it a shot. But uh, I don't know what kind of steel this is, but it's uh, it's pretty hard, and it chipped the um, carbide cutting tool. So according to the internet, they're made of gray cast iron, which is uh, something new to me. So the shaft that I've been planning to use from day one, it's too large of a diameter to fit through my friend's headstock hole, which means I'd have to turn it between centers and it's too long to fit on his lay. So I'm kind of stuck. I don't want to cut it shorter because I want the length to help me line up everything. So I'm going to have to bring it to a machine shop here in Baton Rouge. So that means um, that's as far as I'm going to get with the headstock. So let's wrap up this video and, uh, Thanks for watching. We will uh, we will continue on the next one.